actually been having some major issues lately with our DC to DC charger. This number here should be 40 amps. And it's weird because we were getting 40 amps all winter long while the vehicle is on and uh, now we are not. So this thing down here is the DC to DC charger and for some reason we're only getting, well actually earlier we were only getting 3 amps an hour, now we're getting 8. Uh, it's very bizarre. The even weirder thing about this is that when I turn on the inverter we get a boost of power as you can see now it's up to 13 amps and then it drops but sometimes it actually stays at a higher amperage which I don't understand <laughs> I'm getting really confused oh uh, yeah it's really weird because it's been slowly going down and further and further we were getting 35 and then 30 and then down to 20 and now we're down below 10 and like I said we were just at 3 Although the weird thing is we were at 3 amps, I turned off the truck, turned the truck back on, and now we're at 10. So I turned it off now completely, and I'll turn it back on and I'll see if it shoots up to 30. Okay, well it shot up to 20, and yeah, and then it just declined. So if anybody has any ideas of what the heck is going on here. It could be one of many things. The DC charger could just be broken. The battery of the truck could be going bad. The alternator could be fried. Although the weird thing is is that we have a battery monitor inside the truck and it seems like the battery's topped off. It's not on, it's actually a, a little high. It's at 14 volts. Uh, so I do not understand. I'm guessing it's just the DC charger, but um, yeah, I'm hoping it's not the alternator. And then here inside the truck, it says the battery voltage is perfect. So yeah, I, I just don't understand what's going on. It must be the DC charger. I'm going to be cleaning my hiking shoes today. This is something I should have done a long time ago. Cleaning gel and conditioner waterproofing yeah it's a good thing this problem didn't happen in the winter time though because if we because we used quite a lot of power with the diesel heater in the winter it was always on and it was great getting 40 amps an hour we yeah it was awesome <laughs> like that's a lot of power and um now I'm, I'm just glad it's not the dead of winter because we're not really using our diesel heater anymore. Maybe for like 15 to 30 minutes a day. Barely. Even if that. I'm just glad this didn't happen in the dead of winter because if we ran out of power in minus 40, that would uh, have that sucked. <laughs> clean shoes already looking a lot better. I haven't even waxed it yet. So for some reason, if we put the inverter on and off, it jumps up the amount of amps that we get from the DC to DC charger, which doesn't make any sense. Yeah, no, so today, We've turned it off and on so many times that we've got it back up into the 30s. I, I'm just, I don't get it, man. I don't get it I either. I really don't get it. Today we're hiking Lone Peak, which sounds a lot more formidable than it actually is. It's about 10 kilometers round trip and just over 700 meters elevation gain. So nothing super crazy, but a decent hike. More of a workout because apparently the views aren't great. Yeah. So. The only thing that I'm actually packing in my backpack right now is snowshoes because we do expect to hit snow closer to the top. Aspen's actually on a leash because there's a bunch of signs for active track lines. Although it did say that they ended at the end of March, but you never know. Totally yeah. Super easy to forget ones or something. I don't really know. <laughs> 
I don't know how it works, but she's staying on a leash. Did you find snow? Yeah. It's a little dirty, but gets the job done. There's buds coming out on the trees. This is a larch tree. Oh, larch are such beautiful trees. Yeah, they are. We broke out the snowshoes. I think there's enough snow to do it. We keep coming into patches and then they leave, but I think hopefully this is just it. Snow is so soft and heavy. We're just it's like walking with lead weights on your feet. <laughs> That's uh, Fisher Peak, you can see it in front of us. You can just see the very little peak of it. This is extremely slow going. <laughs> yeah, the snow is very soft. There's Star having fun. Oh, and there's Aspen. And this last hundred meters has been just a nightmare. Well, Aspen found the trail. No, I'm just kidding, I found it. You were like left behind almost. You were whining so much. We're just gonna ditch our snowshoes here. Yeah, and uh, hopefully this is the end of the snow. I, there's only like 20 meters left. <laughs> I'm so sick of those snowshoes. Mount Fisher looks pretty epic. We'll have to try that this summer. Yeah, so Mount Fisher is in the left-hand corner there and the steeples are in the right. And then in this valley in the middle, that's actually a 25 kilometer loop called the Five Passes. We're looking forward to doing that in the summer. Yeah, there's a few peaks you can do. Uh, I don't know exactly what that peak is, but I know it might be Hungry Peak. I think Hungry Peak's a little bit more behind this hill. But yeah, that looks like a fun hike. So I don't really think you want to go anywhere, do you? I think you're done. She's being really lazy. <laughs> you did good. That was a stupid amount of snow. That's the laziest scratching I've ever seen. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I've opted out of using snowshoes on this part of the way down just because it's like skiing. It's pretty sketchy. You just slide down. But uh, post holing, like you can see our snowshoe track, and then that's how deep I went without snowshoes. But it's not that bad with uh, it's not that bad on the way down without snowshoes. It's very sticky. It's very heavy. Should be good training for the legs though. The way down, so this mostly follows an old logging road and then it cuts up. You leave the logging road and you cut up. That was awful. That was just awful. Uh, <laughs> that snow was really deep there because it was on a slope. This is too, but this isn't that bad. Um, I cannot wait 
to take off my shoes and my socks. They're so wet. The waterproofing on the shoes that I did, it actually lasted for almost the entire way up. But they're just absolutely destroyed now. You can see the Kimberly Ski Hill over there in the distance and the Purcells. Can't wait to do some hiking there this summer. Yeah. I must say it's incredible to walk on rock again. Except my shoes feel like a sponge. There's a grouse in the middle of the road. Hello. How's it going? Is he not gonna move? Oh, he is at the last second. I would move. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so I got really wet, like everything is soaked. I put the snowshoes in the oh, oh, back uh, like mesh pocket and all the snow melted all over my ass. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like he peed himself <laughs> in the back. <laughs> Let's see if I can wring the water out. Don't pour it on your shoe though. Yeah, that'd be dumb. <laughs> oh, girls. <laughs> Ew. Yeah, that's awful. <laughs> Aspen's completely passed out even before she gets in the vehicle. <laughs> I'm just putting away our shoes and backpack and uh, yeah. That's what she's doing. Well, she was actually, like, we had to get down fast because she was actually falling asleep. Like, we'd stop, talk to the camera, and she was closing her eyes and, like, falling asleep standing there. And <laughs> it was adorable, but, uh, yeah, I guess she's really tired. Got her some salmon and rice. <laughs> yeah, I know you're very hungry. <laughs> Our plan was to actually give this to her before the hike because she doesn't really eat unless something like this is very, very yummy. Um, she just kind of like picks away at her food the whole day. So we'd like to get her to eat as much as possible before a big hike like that. So she's got energy, but we forgot about it. So she gets to have it afterwards. <laughs> Would you like me to put the rest in? Oh, it stinks. Oh my god. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have picked the salmon. It smells so much like salmon. It's beautiful. 